It is better, it is healthier to be fat and strong than it is to be skinny and weak. The data actually shows this. In fact, we're probably not in an obesity epidemic. We may actually be in an under-muscled, weak epidemic. The data is alarming. I like when Dr. Gabriel on said this. This is the first time I heard someone say that. Mm. Say that we're under muscled. We're, yeah. not over, we're not over fat. We're under muscled. Okay. So you guys want to hear some crazy. So I, I was thinking about this a lot this morning. And I remember, you know, I used to train a lot of doctors. I remember one of them, uh, what, what, what kind of, he was a vascular surgeon. And he said to me, he said, you know, a sizable minority of people um, are, are the ones that get type 2 diabetes and get heart attacks. Like they're not fat and they get heart attacks. And I said, what do you mean a sizable minority? And he goes, well, it's not a majority, but it's a big enough percentage to where it's kind of weird. And I, I always stuck with me, you know, it's like, that's true. Right. Cause we always think obesity causes everything. Mm -hmm. It's the obesity that's causing everything is what we think, but that's not necessarily the case. So I looked up some, some statistics. So trip off this 15 to 20%. Okay. So roughly two out of every 10 people who get type two diabetes are not even overweight. Okay. That's a lot. That's millions of people. 20 to 30% of people who get heart attacks are not overweight. 35% of people with high blood pressure are not overweight and 60 to 70% of cancer patients, actually a majority are not overweight. Now you, you want to know what all, all of them have in common? Low muscle. Yes. Sarcopenia. Yeah. So low muscle mass. Oh, sarcopenia. Yeah. Sarcopenia. In fact, sarcopenia is, is there a high body fat percentage or is it like all uh, average across yeah. the board? So, you know, we, there used to be this belief that if you were obese, you probably had more muscle mass. And then there was a study years ago where they showed, no, this isn't the case at all. People who are obese have less muscle mass. They're actually weak. Mm -hmm. They, they suffer from sarcopenia. And uh, that was a big myth is just because you, the uh, logical thought process, I is believe that they're be true. carrying weight, right? They, yes. they must have muscle to support the weight. Listen, yeah. being, um, being skinny and weak is actually far worse. Than, now, of course there's extremes. Now, somebody be on, be on here, but those oh, 600 pounds or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking about like when you're looking at Rel it's all relative. Yeah, general like general, you know, range of uh skinny a week and 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 overweight, right? Like what we'll see. Um it, it, look it, look at athletics for example. How many sports is it benef do you ever see a skinny weak person perform? Never. But you mm. see a lot of sports where people are a little Chess. heavy and they do pretty damn good. Mm. Physical sports, Justin. I know. It's <laughs> It's just <laughs> mentally physical. Yeah. <laughs> they burn a lot of calories doing that, actually, but, right? But they yeah. do. But think about that, right? Like, there's been baseball players, football players, MMA fighters. Uh, there's been, you know, people in all kinds of sports, track and field even, where the body fat percentage is a little high, mm -hmm. and yet they perform uh, really well. You never see the opposite. Yeah. So strength gives you, muscle gives you mobility. It gives you insulin sensitivity. It I gives, think that gives the, you the buffer. I think that's resilience. The big one. That's yeah. a big one. The insulin sensitivity, I think, is the is the biggest one because it's like it, and and it's in the same vein as a uh, buffer too. Because it's like if you have all of this this muscle, okay, that that requires a lot of energy and calories to be sustained and to move and to be used in on your body. In comparison to fat, or in anything comparison else. to fat, then it it, it, it affords you. Uh, what the the American lifestyle a bit like you can get away with eating out having a couple of drinks here and there. Whereas if you have little to no muscle mass on you and yeah, so and no a, flexibility and a slower metabolism, when you do that, it's like I always try to explain to people why that's so important that we focus first on building muscle and building the metabolism because, and why some people feel like this. Like how many people have you ever talked to as clients that said like, man, Adam, I just feel like I eat so good. And then I, I have that one meal or I ate that one candy bar, that one thing. And I feel like it sticks right to yes. me. You've heard that so many times. And you know, the young trainer in you goes like, well, that's not possible. It's not like you ate 250 calorie or 500 calorie candy or, or whatever, and it was stuck to your body. But hey, if if 500 calories is a third or, you know- a, Of what, a, your, what your maintenance is. Is what your maintenance is, then man, it really can feel like a couple mistakes in the diet and it does add body yeah. fat to you versus 
someone who has just as many pounds of fat on their body, but they have an extra 20 pounds of muscle, same same body type, same sex, same everything, just give that same amount of fat even, just give that person 20 pounds more muscle. Oh my God, the 500 extra calories here, there, and in, in, that's not ideal. Your your body ends up utilizing that for energy for maintaining the muscle mass. That's so right. And huge difference. And also muscle is a storage vessel for uh, glycogen. And glycogen is what your body turns sugars and carbohydrates into. So when you look at uh, blood sugar levels, insulin sensitivity, this is a big one, right? We know now that uh, issues with uh, being sensitive to insulin or having bad fasting glucose or whatever, like that's connected to a lot of things, including heart disease, but definitely diabetes and cancer and all that stuff. Um, muscle is one place that you store. Can that's, we pull up so, the numbers on that? What? Can you can you show me, Doug, uh, how much more glycogen, five pounds of fat versus five pounds of muscle? Well, body fat doesn't store glycogen. At all? No. So literally, no body so fat. Is, how many? So, so glycogen. So carbohydrates would have to get converted, get converted over and into stored fat. into fat. Yeah, and, or turned into fat when you and you have muscle mass. So your liver. And so your let's muscle look at mass, that. Let's how much? How much does five pounds of how much muscle glycogen is stored in five? Pounds how many of, grams of carbohydrates would five pounds of muscle in, store? In, in calories? Measuring in calories oh. probably the easiest way to do well, it. Well, so this is what I see here: is fifteen grams of glycogen per kilogram of body weight. So that'd be like seven seven grams. Um. So try per muscle pound. Try muscle. Uh, put fi how many? How many? How many grams of carbohydrates can five pounds of muscle store? It might Let's be easier that. just to find calories and see what you're going to have to convert that to calories. You multiply it times four. Yeah, yeah. Give me a second. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, my point well, is no. This is what I want to. I, I want to put this. In, I want to put this into perspective yes. for people because that's such a big deal. It's like yeah. just by you having an extra. I used to give this old generic, and I know it's a generic number, but I used to tell someone, "Oh, we add." basically three to five pounds of muscle to your body. We don't change anything else. We just add three to five pounds. And it's like you can have a Big Mac a day now every single day and your body is not going to store that as body fat. Yeah. That's a big fucking deal. It is. Again, mm -hmm. that's a that, that's an estimation and it's like, it, obviously there's massive variance and all kinds of other variables, but to get, get the point across of yeah. how important it is that we build a little bit of muscle and how valuable that can be to you to uh -huh. maintaining a, a healthy, fit life. It's also, look, it's a, it's a storage vessel for glycogen, like I said. So your liver and your muscles are the largest places where you'll store a glycogen, primarily. That's where you store it. If you build muscle, you've increased your storage capacity, mm -hmm. which means you have now when you eat carbohydrates or sugars, your body has some place to put it. it there, yeah. And muscle is very insulin sensitive. It's actually, in fact, the fastest way one of the fastest ways to increase or improve insulin sensitivity is to simply build muscle. There's studies on severely obese individuals, people who are very overweight, and they haven't lose no weight. They haven't built a little bit of muscle, and we have these dramatic improvements yeah. in their fasting glucose and in their uh, their insulin sensitivity. But it, there's more than that, right? There's also functionality and mobility. Like move around the world and live your life being skinny and weak yeah. versus being overweight but strong. Yeah. Yeah. You are less capable, less functional. There's less you can do in the world. There's less things you can you, you know move and carry, and uh, it makes the quality and of life. You can't dismiss how much carryover that has too. Uh, that's to your quality that's of life. Immeasurable too. Absolutely. It's just hard to, to like quantify. Um, oh, okay. I added three to five pounds of muscle. This is also too. I I get really annoyed by the science community that wants to distill this down to like what it is calorie wise and only that in a burning oh, sure. burning state. When it's like there's so many other factors to the person who adds five pounds of muscle. Like what have they done in order to do that? Well, you know they've made some good food choices because you're not you're not building muscle without proper nutrients, right? So mm -hmm. they've added that. They've added some sort of strength training routine. So there's some consistency around that. They've prioritized some sort of recovery. And then how order. does that make them feel throughout yeah, the day? Yeah. And then how does that in, that how does that bleed over into their work life, their home life, their 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 mm -hmm. parenting, their relationships, their productivity, their energy levels for the day. And it's like, and then how many more steps a day do they take because of that? And how much more active and helpful around the house are they because of that? And how much more likely are they to play with their kids because of that? And it's like mm -hmm. It's so hard to quantify that, yeah. but from experience, you know how radically you've shifted someone's yeah. life when you've just added five pounds. Do you to find it. some numbers, Doug? So I'm not sure if this answers your question, but so it's 15 grams of glyc glycogen per kilo of muscle mass, which is 6.8 per pound. And if it's four calories, yeah. I believe per, so that's 27 calories per pound of Basically per muscle. pound. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, but 27 calories, how many grams? 
Well, that's uh, 6.8 grams. Yeah. So 6.8 grams I mean, of, of carbohydrates that you store in a pound of muscle storing. Yeah. That's not to mention how much it burns and all that stuff. Like I said, it's it, now the liver stores most of your glycogen, but muscle mass does it as well. This is why, like I said, uh, again, if you look at the studies, you want to improve your blood sugar, build some muscle. That's the fastest. I have a family member, in fact, I'm working with right now, and she can't figure out why her fasting glucose is, she's, she's not overweight, right? She's like, I don't eat a lot. I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm on the treadmill, this and that. And I'm like, please lift weights, lift weights. <laughs> finally, finally, she started lifting weights once a week. Guess what do you think? What do you think happened? No. She, she texted me back. She's like, this is, she's right like, away. I know you told me, but I didn't realize what happened this fast. Uh, but that's what muscle does. And, and by the way, the data on people who are underweight, look at the mortality on people who are underweight. It's worse than the data on people who are overweight. Do you know that? Yeah. yeah. People who are underweight have terrible uh, mortality. Now, what am I? I'm not trying to advocate for people to go <laughs> on obese, this obesity like journey. Obese bulk. Yeah. But we need to shift our mindset a little bit. And the medical community, there's about to, there's a shift yeah. that's about to happen in the medical community because obesity, we used to look at obesity as the the cause, but obesity may be the smoke. Mm -hmm. The fire may actually be. The fact that these people are under muscled and metabolically, metabolically as a result, unhealthy mm -hmm. and being obese is a side effect of that, which then causes more negative effects itself. But again, there's a sizable minority, 20, 30% of people never get obese, mm -hmm. but they suffer from these chronic diseases and it's because they're under muscled. Was it, so we having this conversation with Dr. Seeds, is that what sparked, uh, some of this? Oh, no. So with Dr. Seeds, I was, uh, I am going to be talking a, a little bit about, you're right, actually. I am going to be talking to a group of doctors, a large room of doctors about strength training and why that should be the first line yeah. uh, of defense in terms of exercise. Like when you recommend activity to your patients, you need to adv you know, uh, advocate for strength training and here's why. Yeah. Right? We need more doctors on board with this is, is the point to that. It's just like, it, because I mean, we could say it to death. We can, all the other influencers can say it to death. A lot of people are still like live and die by what their doctor tells them. And so it's like, you know, if we can get the medical community to really embrace that fact that, and there's so many uh, studies coming out to really like back you up on them. It yeah. does. Yeah. It does feel like we're moving in that direction. But then I, I, I wonder sometimes too, is that it, cause it's in our little bubble. Hmm. It's so hard sometimes to like to judge like what the general population is feeling or what the the information they're getting because it's like yeah in our circle we have doctor lots of doctor friends yeah. you know uh, Gabriel Lyon Doctor Seeds yep. yep. you know like all these great doctors that are good friends of ours that are promoting this message but I mean that's our little circle of friends yeah. it'll right? be interesting like, when we speak at his event because he's his event is about you know, wellness and it's health. to all medical professionals, it's 500, yeah. it'll be 500, uh, medical doctors and medical professionals. It'll be interesting to see their response mm -hmm. to what I'm saying. Uh, and, and when I present them as if they're surprised by it, or if they're like, you know what, actually I've been seeing studies on, this. do you this predict right. being challenged by them at all? I, so I thought of that. Here's what'll happen. If I get challenged, I don't think I'll get challenged by the typical doctor. I think I'll get challenged by the triathlete doctor yeah, the or, the, or the distance uh, runner focused doctor. oh, doctors. Yeah. yeah. There, there'll be a doctor in the audience who's a, who's a marathon runner or a triathlete who's a cardio gonna, junkie. Yes. Who wanted to make that case. And they're going to try and say no or, you know, whatever. The, yeah. Yeah. And you know, the most staunch. Yeah. And all, sure. for, look, all forms of activity, if done appropriately are amazing. Don't like quit just cause I'm saying this and then do nothing. But if you're going to pick just one, like, to build muscle. That is the, 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 the reaching, the effects of that are so far reaching and the effort required to get those effects are so little in comparison to other forms of exercise. But we do need to change this, this idea. By the way, you know, now that I'm working out in a commercial gym, uh, kind of a mainstream one, I'm noticing there has been a little bit of a shift. I'm seeing more people who are strong and mobile who probably need to lose some weight, then I'm seeing the skinny fat that we used to see all the time in the gyms. I don't see a lot of that. Hmm. I see much more of the like stronger, like, you know, you don't see a lot about of the cardio fat, machines. No, I'm not oh, seeing a lot of that at all. And it might be maybe because I, you know, the, the gym I go to yeah. is kind of strength training focused. Yeah. But, you're talking about a UFC gym. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a little bit of a bonus. Yeah. But it's cool to see because I see all these, you know, and you, and you can tell they move good. And in fact, there's this thing. I don't know if I talked about them on the show. There's this couple that works out. And they're, you know, they're, they're not, they're not super overweight, but they're in the higher body fat percentage in, in, in terms of like what you would consider to be lean or whatever, man, you got to see these couple move, man. They're jumping rope and doing really stuff. Oh, bro. They're doing stuff on the grass. 
jump box. Like they train like athletes. They, they, I don't know if they compete or if this is the way they like to train, hmm. but the way they move, it's like, oh, wow, you guys are fit. You yeah. guys are very athletic. You know, that's anyway. hard. That's hard though, too, because they're, I mean, I struggle when I see someone like that because there's also the, the potential that they're doing that with the intent of trying to lose weight. You know why I don't and, think so? Oh, why? I watch how they work out. Okay. Their workouts are intentionally, it's like they're following performance advanced. Like they know how to apply mm. jump boxes. Mm. They know how to apply mobility. Adequate rest periods oh, yeah. and all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they know what they're doing. That's a big difference. Yeah, They're not doing like they're jumping around and doing so a is bunch your, of different is, things. So is your guess that they they probably play intramural sports or something? Or like, what's your thought? Or they just know. want to be athletic? It, you like know, that? functional, quote unquote, functional training is more popular these days. So they, they could just be fanatics mm. and just really into, mm. um, you know, feeling like they can move, you know, really well. Yeah. Because a lot of times you get somebody who's who's trying to lose weight and they're trying to do it through that process. They don't look like that. Because yeah, okay. you know what that looks like. You've seen yeah, that Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. That's why they I, look I, like they're you dying. struggle with that, right? You see someone yeah. who's working that hard. And they're really overweight, and they're 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 applying that intensity, thinking they're going to get this great return, calorie yeah. burn wise and fat loss wise. Meanwhile, they're at a you know fifteen hundred calorie intake, <laughs> yeah. and they're taking twenty thousand steps, and it's just like, just I mean, they're burning the candle at both ends, yeah. and they're not under, they're not understanding why they're not seeing results. Yeah, you know? terrible. So. Today's giveaway is Maps Split. If you want to enter to win, leave us a comment below this video. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, MAPS Anabolic, half off. MAPS Anabolic Advanced, also half off. Both very powerful muscle building workout programs. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm learning about all these fun ways to use household products to make like things for kids like slime oh, and yeah. like snow and stuff like that. Have you done any of that? Uh, so, yeah. So we make, we, we make his bath salts from home. We just made a paper mache. Man, volcano. bath salts used to be drugs. Not that. The, um, I know what you mean. The, the one that, the, the bath bomb. Yeah. Bath bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bath bombs that we've, we've made homemade versions. <laughs> we of that. Said bath ball, we bath just balls. did a, uh, we just did a paper <laughs> mache <laughs> volcano that we made from scratch. Oh, what? Oh, oh those are fun, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I mean, what I a just, great I, idea. I forgot about that. Oh yeah. It's cool. So I bought this little kid. That's so fun. I, I told he, I told you he's yeah, he's like into science, right? So he's all, is this the one that they mail you it every month? No, no, it's just a, it was like this box. It wasn't even that expensive too. I can't remember what I paid for it, but it, it, it came with, um, I don't know, maybe I want to say like seven or eight, maybe more than that, maybe 10, uh, science experiments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and that some of them are so basic, like prime colors. What, like, so you would do like, we'd have these, it came with this little thing and you put the, you mix them together to make other colors. Yeah. Yeah. And then you make, and then, but it's water and you use water coloring and then you drip it. Yeah. And then there are other ones where we were mixing like a oil base with water. And then we were making like almost like made like a homemade version of like a lava lamp. So we could see that. And like, just really just but with a bunch of home stuff, you know, it's just cool. basic. The volcano. I forgot so we're about using, that. We're That's using fun. syrup, olive oil, water, food coloring stuff. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I do a lot of things like that. He's really into, to so it's so funny because Katrina was like concerned like you know I don't know if we should be letting him say that it's he he, he thinks he makes poison right and it comes from like Mario you know brothers and poison oh, so he's saying I made poison so, he's, so he makes poison like that's what he's always like pretending to make poison <laughs> if he's in the sandbox yeah. he's adding rocks and sticks and it's poison and, and and water if we're in the bathtub we're mixing all the shampoos and the stuff to make poison and, the, and then you're yeah. worried to freak out at school yeah yeah uh, so I mean I am not worried yeah. I was it's like, more of an like, elixir yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah so like that's his thing right so he just loves like making all this stuff so we use a lot of and I'll just get random stuff out of the, out of the let's see what happens when we put flour with this with that and then he gets a kick out yeah of we, we just did uh we just did one where you take two cups i think i got it right two cups of baking soda mm -hmm. and half a cup of conditioner and it turns into like it's like snow like you can make snowmen out of it and like it's it's very messy yeah it has a reaction where you, can, uh, you know dude uh, i have to i have to tell you guys about this so you guys know how um i am in terms of like you know doing things a little too hard uh it, <laughs> Grabbing things yes. and breaking things. And, yes. you know, anyways, it's been sort of a, We're very aware my of MO. Uh, well, my youngest is very much along those same, uh, in that same vein. And he he just like gets up and, and 
runs really fast or he gets up and uh, grabs something and he just does it like really hard and, and like everything is rough. It's just rough. Yeah. There's no like gentle, soft, like movements or anything. It's just bam, let's go. And so uh, I was like on the couch last night and um, it was time for him to go to bed and he was just getting up, um, you know, from the ground and he goes over to like jump on the couch where the pillow is. And he was just going to like hit his face on the pillow. Like, yeah, like, and jumps up. He literally jumps right into um, the arm of the couch where it's the, the, um, like the, the wood. L- oh, and hits it right in the eye. And he, he has like the biggest shiner. <laughs> today, oh. dude. I was just like, buddy, why did you do that? Like, it just was like, in an instant, like, and, and I knew because he he started to like, and he never like really cries. He just was kind of like, like trying to like, <laughs> yeah. like, like little little like yeah. breathe it out, you know. And he's like, how old is he? He's like, ah. oh yeah, no, so he's eleven. But like he, dude, hey, LA, when boys right around that age when they get hurt, it's the it's the. Yeah, this is when yeah, they're yeah. trying to figure out not to cry. Like, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, and so and 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 at first I'm like, oh, I'm concerned. And, and Courtney's coming over trying to give him love and stuff, and I'm just like, immediately I'm like, okay, so here's what you say at school. You know, <laughs> like, you should see the other guy. You yeah. know, like, he's yeah. like, oh, I've never heard that. I'm like, it's the joke that everybody is. Uses. It like seriously black. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's like already kind of closing up. And Child, oh, like a it's just real like, one. Oh, Child it's a, services it's, will be showing up. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I was a little concerned. I didn't about make it. my bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy, dude. But it's just poor a, kid. again, and then so like like father like son. So I'm actually like my routine to go take the uh, trash cans out. I have to like take the trash cans all the way up. You guys know where my house is, where there's this huge hill to yeah. get all the way to the front of the street. Oh, that's annoying. And so, yeah, it's annoying. I have to either like walk them all the way up, which, you know, normally we do we just kind of make like a little hike out of it. Um, but if it gets late at night, I have to just like throw in my truck and go. But recently, like I just got this like electric bike. And so I'm like, Oh, I'll make this easy for me. So I take the garbage cans up, all full with one hand like this, and I'm just like oh, riding the bike, oh, you're holding it one hand, yeah. and I just go at all night? the way up, yeah. And it was fine going up, right? <laughs> but they were empty, and I had to like bring them back down to the house. Like, and uh, <laughs> dude, around. so I'm like going down, and it starts to get to the steep part. And I'm my hand, so it has the throttle on the right side, and it also has the brake. And I'm holding this trash can in this hand. And the wheels start wobbling on on the trash can, and it kind of goes to the side. And it's a big trash can, and it's kind of heavy. I'm like, it's like twisting my arm. I'm like, oh no! And so I I grab the the uh, brake, and I and I clench on it hard. It's the front brake. Oh, oh, oh no! So, you went over. Whew, I flip over the bike. This like <laughs> like comes up in the air. This is really hard to describe because it was like a lot of like pretzely weird flip movements that were happening all at once. And I'm like over the bike and I kind of like land on the, um, on one of the, the pedals, like on my calf. <laughs> and it just like totally dug in there and like <laughs> gave me like a dead leg. Uh, and I managed to not like really injure myself somehow. And I got up and I was How just like, okay? Oh my God, dude. Wait, so this is in the dark. Your family didn't yes, know they're inside. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Did anything. you lay on the floor and for I a just second? Was hobbling in just oh. like, <laughs> Let me see your calf. Is it all bruised? <laughs> what happened to you? Is your yeah, calf it's all bruised? bruised on there. Yeah. Let me see. So, yeah, yeah, I see see. You can can't see anything, dude. You get, you gotta get, we got to get a, yeah. ne- a nest oh, kit. A, oh, a nest yeah. cam. Well, so I we, saw that. That's a big it's, ass it's, bruise, bro. It's fine. It's, but it, it's, so, not it's not fine, it's bro. Still, it's Hold still on. a little I, bit, I, little bit ginger. Bro, I saw him. Hey, listen, listen. I saw him peek out. You know why he doesn't want to show us? He's going to the doctor. Yeah, I know. He's going to be like, bro, you better go check that out. You get some gang. Hey, listen. Hey, he has black socks on. He went up. White ass legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looked like I didn't know the sock on, bro. That's how <laughs> dark that is. It was just like a line that just No, it's like, not, bro. You know, oh, that so, looks bad, uh, dude. Anyways. You, you, uh, you got to show Adam. You got to yeah, show Adam yeah, after the show. Oh, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> you need to go to the doctors, you. dude. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I don't understand. But yeah, it was just... Uh, so no, how okay? So that obviously that stuff happens to all of us, right? Like no, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> that never happens. You're, you're, to not me. you. You're right. right Sam, no I'm like ultra have, cautious. <laughs> so I was like, man, I'm not gonna climb that rock. It's no, like, bro, it's like four feet, bro. Come on, you can do no, that. Nah, dude. I'm not gonna do that. It's too good. No way. He, yeah. hey, listen, I'll tell. I gotta say something. I gotta give you props though. I saw the videos of you doing drills in the field on performance advance. Oh yeah, this fucker can move, dude. Yeah. 
He's a moose. Are I you mean, sure they're him or they're the body double ones? No, <laughs> no I had that for when I got. Oh wait, we used the AI, didn't we? Yeah, we, used Kyle, we used Kyle for yeah. some. No, stuff. bro, he fucking moves. And no, I was telling him so about it. I was, I was here the other morning. I was all, yeah, I was like uh, d- disappointed because it's like uh, we we're talking about like our age yeah. and, and like you know some restrictions, and I just feel like tight and like just this old body now that I'm. I mean, I around. forget you were a, a, a college football player, so you obviously. You're, you're obviously slow as hell compared to how you must have been before, yeah, slower, but, yeah. but compared to everybody else, you're pretty fast, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I watched you move on that thing. The real question was, Thanks. how sore were you after? Oh, all of very sore. <laughs> were you really? Very, very Where did sore. you get sore? Was it all <laughs> everywhere? The- hamstrings yeah. were just done. <laughs> oh, my hamstrings, like it, it was weird. It was like uh, all the way up my back, you know, because just the impact. Like I haven't even just like even pounded uh, the ground like that in a long time. So it was, yeah, it was funny, dude. It was just like you just feel like all the joints just talking yeah. back to you. Yeah. I wasn't sore at all after anabolic advance. It was all like overhead press with 20. <laughs> Don't you want to use heavier dumbbells? I'm demonstrating exercise. I'm not like this guy. No, put heavy weight on the bar for the demonstration. Yeah, I know what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm trying to do all the complex I remember stuff. when we used to do all of our videos, I remember when Justin- You always wanted just, real yeah, weight just, on the bar. Just, yeah, put like 185 on there. Yeah. Like, 185? <laughs> it's a video. We're doing you know, it. We can even do this see like it. six times, right? <laughs> I just felt like a total puss. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. You know, I couldn't so do it. Anyway. No shame in my game. Hey, put the plastic ones on there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just use the bar. <laughs> Showing technique. I don't know how much I'm working out with, dude. Yeah. Anyway. It's funny, though, how many people think that. You know, how many people in the, on uh, YouTube have been busted for doing fake weights like that? I know Athlete Next has been busted on that. I forget. If who I'm else. demonstrating technique, then I'm going to show you good technique. I'm not showing you what I'm working out with. I'm stupid. Yeah. So yeah. Speaking yeah. of old guys, tell me about this 42 year old dude that's throwing heat. There is a He's supposed yeah, to play there maybe is in the, a, there's oh, a yeah. she, there's a 42 year old dad that is throwing a 102 mile an hour fastball and has some tryouts with uh, some MLB teams coming up so I don't know So if, what was the story you were telling me this he 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 got he got drafted but they got injured at a college yeah, so yeah, he so, couldn't ever he lost his opportunity Yeah yeah so he, exactly so he ended up losing his opportunity he goes through a divorce in like his late 30s and out of like to try and get his mind off of the divorce and stuff like that, picks up throwing again to just meditative. I mean, imagine just like one of us doing something sure. like that. Like, imagine going through a divorce, you and you're like, man, I need, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some strength drills, just get his mind or, off of it. Yeah, play yeah. football or basketball. Yeah, it's, it's hard time, right, right. And so he did it with that intention hmm. and just got back in the rhythm of it and was getting clocked at like 100, 102 miles an hour. Wow, dude. And so what? now is is trying out for some MLB teams. Bro, can you just real quick, oh let's just I think, get his jersey, dude. Let's, oh, first off, as a, as, a, as, a, as an old guy, like I'm yeah. going to root for this guy. Oh, big time. Yeah. I see a, someone in that age, I'm like, that's my favorite person. Yeah, yeah. But number two, like his ex-wife, like talk about payback, you know, she, I'm leaving you, you know, he's like pro baseball player now. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> did oh, you, cool. Did you, you, really, yeah. did you look up Andrew did, after I told you off air, we were talking to, I told you guys about the Bill Belichick uh, oh, conspiracy. Yes. Did anybody look that up afterwards? Did you guys look it up? The, the Brady conspiracy. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that to so me. So first explain the conspiracy. Okay. So Bill Belichick, who was the, the coach of the Patriots okay. got fired this year, okay. which is, he's like a, he's known as a top coach. Right? Right. One of the best coaches out there, okay. and there I think there was I think three or four NFL coaching opportunities coming up. So the question was, where is he going? He's going to go to the Chargers. He's going to go here. Like what? What? What team is he going to go to? And all those teams ended up signing people. And so it was like, how is Bill Belichick not going to get picked yeah. up somewhere? Well, then all of a sudden this conspiracy starts to come out, and that it starts after Harbaugh leaves uh Michigan. Uh, Mich- Michigan State. So Harbaugh go- is coming coming back to the pros, okay? So Michigan State college team. Right. Decides to leave. And there's a so there's a coaching opening there. Michigan State is also Tom Brady's alma mater. Tom Brady only played 3 years of college, so he has 1 year of eligibility <laughs> left, and you can come back and play in college if you've been out of football for a year or more, your you can your eligibility is you couldn't do it like in the same season. So the or conspiracy back is Belichick's going to go back. So the conspiracy coach. is that Belichick's going to go back Dude. to go back to Michigan, and then he's going to have he's going to have uh, Tom Brady come and play for him, and they'll go win a national. And, championship. and he can, and he can, and he can make money too. And right? now with and so when that conspiracy first came out, I would have right away dismissed it like that's ridiculous. Tom Brady's worth millions and millions of dollars. No college team could do that could handle that, or why would he do that? It's not worth it. To him but now with the rules in college with nil and these 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 <laughs> these players can take sponsorships and can take money that way 
there's definitely a way you could finagle, and that you would That'd think be the most absurd thing ever. I would it would know how much be money so it would make brilliant. Michigan? Yes, yeah, make so I much know. money. The, I know the ticket. His the ticket sales would go through. It'd the be the roof. most viewed the football jersey game. sales oh. would go through the roof. The the uh, television ads oh. that would be would be, be. I mean, it would be a brilliant play in so many ways. So it's like. I, Who the, came up with that? I don't know. That's brilliant. I don't know. I uh, saw it. And I, and I, I sent it to my that's buddies. Like a dream. That would that's be cool. so funny. I mean, I, I had this like, because I have like one year eligibility left. And I knew of, I, ha I heard of a story of, so we, we had like a school adjacent to ours that was like a part of it, it was the Divinity School. <laughs> yeah. And so technically it was still part of Trinity where I went. And so this guy actually was able to try out on the football team. He was like in his 40s. Yeah. And he played. That's and so I was great. just like, what? Yeah. Wow. So I was like, I mean, Kurt Warner's story isn't that crazy, but it's kind of like that. I mean, he was he was over in the um uh, arena football for a long time. And I don't remember how old it was when the Rams finally picked him up. He comes over to the Rams yeah. later on in his career and then goes and my, wins a Super my, Bowl. My favorite yeah. I have two favorite older guy stories uh, in sports, and it's uh, George Foreman, who won the heavyweight championship. How old was he? 40? 41? In his 40s. And I uh, looked at it, and then Randy Couture. Randy yeah, Couture was kicking dude, ass. He, he came Couture. out of retirement. Yeah. Randy Couture came out. He was an announcer. I remember him. I actually remember when he said he was going to do it. He was watching the heavyweights that were passing the belts around. He's like, man, I could beat all these guys still. And he knew he <laughs> was he retired. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, you know what? And he came out of retirement and then went and won, uh, won the belt. He knew for sure. He was, I mean, imagine too, at that level, I would think that's how too, I feel like Tom Brady, I feel like Tom Brady could look at the college games and go like, oh yeah, I could at yeah. 80, 80 percent I can yeah. play. And well, also, <laughs> that. also the position, right? If he was like a, a, a running a back yeah, or a different. wide receiver at forty, yeah, a, a quarterback, a really good line, yeah. Yeah, if you're a, sure. a kicker, or a quarterback, a position like that, yeah. like where you're, you're a especially more, a quarterback, you need the wisdom to call the plays and see what's going on, on the field. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and that I would imagine at that level. God, just imagine how much of an advantage he has of just being able to see the field. Yeah, so field you think he would get on the field in college and just just murder murk everybody, murder it? Uh, yes. Just wow, George Foreman was forty five. Wow, when what? he became the world heavyweight Your champion, age, dude. Look at that. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this, is this the last decade we could do something like that? Is that what's happening right now? After this decade, we're I, I think so. Are there any fifty? I think that's the cutoff right there. The 45. I couldn't imagine trying to play a professional. Sport. No, I couldn't imagine. How old was I, Nolan I couldn't Ryan? Imagine what in my twenties either. When but. he finally like retired, Who? Ryan was, Nolan, Nolan Ryan. Ryan was up there too. Oh, Nolan Ryan was. Uh, that's one of the manliest Craig. guys that Roger that Craig ever was played up there too. Any sport, but wait, Nolan Ryan was or Roger Clemens. I want to say was he fifty? Oh, 46. You're right. The cutoff is now. Justin. Yeah, dude, it's 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 approaching. Yeah, Damn it. Roger Clemens was up there too. He was up. He he was up there with that, that time frame yeah. when uh, get on here. The, I'll give you guys some, some of his uh, best performance I'll, later. I'll give you guys some like to make you feel better. Look up Robert De Niro. How old he is right now? Because he just had a baby. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, yeah. so, what's his oh, wife like? Twenty. Was it, was it? Is it Robert De Niro? Or yeah. was it Al Pacino? No, which, Al Pacino. Which one of the guys? Al Pacino. Was it Al Pacino? Yeah, Al Pacino just had a baby oh, with like a Oh, it was Al Pacino, Pacino. Doug. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look up Al Pacino. He's literally eighty something. I saw a picture of him holding his baby. I'm like, bro, how do you play on the floor with your kids? Like, yeah. I can't. I don't even like playing on the floor. The 83, dude. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> look at, look at his Wife is 29. She's 29. 29 <laughs> years old. So see, and it still works. You're, bro, that you're okay. A 54 year difference. That's, Holy, that's not shit. Dude, you could be your kid's grandparent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's weird. <sighs> that's unnatural. Yeah, it doesn't. There's something, yeah, something I mean, off that, about that's that. That's like biblical times. It's, yeah. Yeah. Is that her right there? That's her, dude. Yeah, she's a pretty girl. That's a weird picture of her. Do you believe a, that's possible for the for what, her? The, like, obviously for him. I yeah. mean, congrats. Yeah. Right. But if if do you really believe that she can be a, attracted to that to someone that is that much older? Do you bro, believe it's in Al Pacino, that? Al Pacino, bro. I mean, he's, that, but I mean, that's okay. So so then in in that situation, Al Pacino is, is that her right there? Do all these pictures? Safety, yeah. security, She's money, beautiful. like you know, there's the yeah. factor in a lot. Is that of him in the middle? Is that him in the middle with the, with her right there? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That doesn't even look he's, right. He's wise. He's rich. Well, Anna Nicole Smith was the ultimate example. Of that that, right? that was bullshit, though. It, dude, she married that dude so he could that die. That guy li literally looked like like the, the, like the crypt keeper or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I mean, okay, here she is. She's married. She's got a kid. Pacino's how much longer he's got? Uh, you know, ten years max. And then she's left in her thirties with oh it, all I, his money. I'm not denying the strategy of this. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying like yeah. that. The, right. But it, my point is like, could you be really into that? You know, that it's person? too much, huh? Yeah. yeah. Like even even all the things you're saying, like those are all attractive qualities, wisdom yeah, yeah, yeah. and and security and all this stuff like yeah. that. But 
I, I mean, it, is it? Could you? Are there people that 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 skewed that much that looks does means absolutely nothing? So it doesn't matter. There's got to be, bro. There's got to be. Haven't you ever seen those video? Uh, I don't want to go here. <laughs> you opened it up. Yeah. yeah. No. You know, it's okay. Hey, have you seen those those that's that's those series on? Uh, I don't remember what channel. It's like my six hundred pound live or whatever. People really struggling terribly. They typically have a partner. Yeah. And, the, and they're an enabler, and the yeah. partner oh, yeah. oftentimes oh, yeah, yeah. is not. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Is normal. They're not like in yeah. terms of their size and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they feed them, and they you know do the whole thing. Doug yeah. just highlighted uh, Caldera Lab. It's like maybe if uh, if Al Pacino was using Caldera Lab, he wouldn't look like he's eighty five. <laughs> if he rubbed it all over himself, like, yeah. you think it'll re <laughs> reverse? You better uh, lather up with that silk. <laughs> you have to drink it. For he's, gonna, he's gonna yeah. You have to drink bathe in it. Yeah. You know, like every <laughs> night, just you could afford to bathe. I mean, he's rich enough; he could probably afford to lather himself up. Is there anything to those tanks? Those those oxygen tanks or the ones that the decompression tanks? Yes, you're talking about hyper. Hyper, yes. Yeah. Uh, Hyperbaric. Thank yes. you. Yes. People yes, pay is. big money to have those things, dude. I, I did one. And some of these guys, like the Tom Brady's and stuff like that, these guys got these in their house and yeah. shit or I have did access one. to them daily and they sleep in those have, have you ever been on one before? Mm -mm. It's Never. Uh -oh. Is it? Yep. I was in one. So I had I used to train uh, um, a surgeon who also, one of his businesses was these hyperbaric chambers and they use them to speed up recovery from surgery. And cancer patients also yeah. use them because it made uh, their treatments much more effective. <clears throat> but he's like, you want to come try and use one? I'm like, fuck yeah. So <laughs> you lay in this thing. It's like you're in a submarine. And then there was like a little window and there's like a screen on, in front of me so I could just watch a movie while I'm in there. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. Does it feel I mean, like pressure I've, or was it just... When you when you come out of it, you, your ear pressure changes. Oh, or whatever. okay. I didn't notice much afterwards. Yeah. But I don't there's know. A, there's a lot of these guys that have these in their homes, dude. And that, I mean, that's become like a, mm -hmm. a, I believe like LeBron and all those guys, I think they, a lot of them sleep in that. I don't know how often or, so or I think just they, after injuries. Now, do they use hyperbaric or they sleep in altitude to boost red blood cell production? Oh, no, that's like that what, too. what's his face does for cycling. They're doing the hyperbaric. Oh, they're, yeah. they're going hyperoxygenation. The, the yeah. Dopey. Not yeah, the yeah. other d uh, uh, direction or whatever. Anyway, yeah. speaking of Caldera, did I tell you guys, my, I, my little, my little baby sometimes gets a little eczema. So I put. Cal it was the best thing ever, Caldera. Best thing ever oh. to use on it. Oh. Better than the because what, what does the doctor recommend? Um, it's like a petroleum, you know, barrier or whatever. But the Caldera. Why is it so common in kids to have like eczema? It's very common. They Everything's have common now with with the autoimmune stuff. It's so crazy. Yeah, bro. it's so crazy that how common it is. There's something we're doing something, and we're very careful. I mean, you know, kids. They. I, I think my son has used antibiotics once. Yeah, but most never. likely it's passed down from your shitty gut. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, no, it's passed down from the mom. Well, but both. No, it's it's just the mom. The the There's your microbiome comes from your mom mostly. Mostly, but they're still getting yours. I mean, I've picked up your shitty gut from working well, with that's you. That's what you think. I'm I think convinced. you're just getting. I think you're Justin, just catching you up on you. I'm, I'm fucking convinced. convinced. I think yeah. your shitty diets have caught I was, up on you. I was good <laughs> to go, and then you I've came into my life talking about all this food. gut issue stuff. And I was, bro, when I met you, when I met you, it was like Chick Fil A for breakfast, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I looked good as fuck. That's the thing. Yeah, shits were normal. I looked good. I felt all good. All of a sudden, your stomach nothing like yeah. psoriasis was at bay. Like now, I'm a I eat better than I ever ate. I manage all those things more than that. It's because you guys made fun of me. I went home shitty gut. I made little voodoo dolls of you guys yeah, yeah. poking their tummies. Mm -hmm. uh, You're going to feel it next. So, anyway. you, you know, I mean, you have to think our, you're, you're holding your baby uh, yeah, I'm sure shirtless sure. and playing. You're a lot of your, it's your hyper, microbiome. Has hyper to. clean environment, uh, antibiotic use everywhere. Um, it mm. could be chemicals that we're exposed to. It could be generational. It's probably the case where it's cumulative, but food allergies alone, man. I don't know if you can even find a chart yeah, on this. Those exploded. Look up childhood years. food allergies throughout the decades. It's, it's I saw, so crazy. I when saw I, an article of these like these moms that are that are pushing for because of like all the peanut allergies and gluten allergies and all these allergies that are happening. Yeah. It showed a classroom of uh, kids in a music class and they're playing in these like fucking tents. Double. That's yeah. the same like COVID lockdown yes. uh, uh, setup. There, yeah, there's no people thanks. that there's people that are pushing for that. You know, it's like oh my god. I, I mean, weird. I, I, I tell people this who are younger, yeah. like you know, we talk to our Put editors. A bubble around them. They're all in their twenties and stuff, and or I'll talk to my kids. And I'm like, when I was a kid. And I, I know I sound like a like my dad when he tell me stories, but it's weird. I don't. Did you know anybody with a food allergy at all? No, no, no not no, one. No, no, never. 
Yeah. It's so we now it um now it's now name me a classroom that doesn't have at least three kids. Yeah. At least. Uh-huh. Yeah. Name I don't know anybody that has a classroom that doesn't have at and least. And that's in combination with the autoimmunity issues which have exploded yeah. all over the place. That's so, so weird, dude. Yeah, well, we're doing it to ourselves for sure. It's something that we're doing or a combination of things that we're doing and we got to figure it out. And they're trying really they're, it's actually a, a big area of study cuz yeah. wow, what does that show, Doug? So these are people or Children discharged from hospitals under the age of 18 for uh, things related to food allergies. It looks like almost a four-time increase from 1998 to 2004. Yeah, four. Not even today. That's yeah, 2004. That's 2004. How much you want to bet? It's, it's even a short window. How there. much you want to bet now? It's even far worse. Yeah. Yeah. That's just basically that's 4X from when we went to high school. So mm -hmm. it's 4X from when we went to high school to 2004. And then since then. It's, it's another 20 years. Yeah. I'm sure it's even crazier. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Probably. Speaking of kids and stuff, I, got, I pulled up some interesting. There's an interesting data from act, uh, children's activity levels. In 1975 compared to 2000 compared to 2015. So 1975 would represent uh, zero on this chart, meaning that's the, that's the, the control. Okay. So how many, how much kids played outside, how much kids did sports, how much kids, whatever. Okay. Since 1975 to 2000 outdoor play in 2000 was down almost 20%, 2015, 30%. So almost 30% less time spent outside. Do you know, I believe it's so much worse than that. <sighs> this I, is from the UK. I, I, so it might even be worse. I think than, it's yeah. so much worse than that. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's still, it, it's, it's become normal that we, we mm -hmm. see this, but and I have a really cool neighborhood. Like I love the neighborhood that I live in right now. And it's, I think it's got a really cool community. I like, I know all the people and everybody's like out garage open and you see people walking over. But I, you know, I grew up in a time where every day you were in the neighborhood, there was at least three, four groups of kids throughout the whole street or oh, yeah. block, always out in the street playing and throwing the ball and shoot. And it's just that, Show me a neighborhood in the at least in the Bay Area where you go and after, you see that after school. Yeah. If you drove a car through a neighborhood when school was out, you had to be very careful. Yes, because mm -hmm. balls were flying around, kids were running, riding their bikes. Um, now it's like ghost town. It's rare. Yeah, it's so rare to to see that. And so I feel like the number twenty to thirty percent is like underrepresentation. I feel like it's way worse than that. It feels mm -hmm. like it, doesn't? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Did you see? Um, little switch, but staying in the kids will stay with Disney, right? Did you see the article I sent over that? So uh, Andrew sent it to me yesterday that I, I think I just sent it to you. Did you see it? When Disney it. bought stake in? What is that? What? Bro, Disney. Oh, oh, I saw that. $1.8 billion yes. stake in Fortnite. Epic oh, Games. Yeah. In Epic yes, Games. Uh -huh. So they're moving. Yeah, they've created worlds within, the, or they're creating it with them. Yes. Yeah, for them to play. So they're building. The, are you pulling it up, Doug? My son actually okay, showed me that. that. Look at Disney he's buy, all into it. Yeah. So I, and actually, I wanted to, I sent it to Sal because I wanted to hear Domenico's opinion. Yeah. I actually wanted to hear somebody who's like heavy into a Fortnite and these games yeah. to tell me like how cool this could be or not be because it's, it's obviously out of uh, totally. How wild. So you own, Epic Games owns Fortnite. They can literally sell space in their video game to Disney for one and a half That's billion so dollars <laughs> without even buying the company. Yeah. Literally. They're like, yeah, you can yeah, you, spend money you and can build have some something. real estate in here. For wow. this much, yeah, that's wow. Nuts. I mean, they're really going. I mean, it was kind of quiet, this whole metaverse talk for a while, You're right? And yeah. it felt like it really had fallen off. And this, it feels like we're gonna. I go mean, I get it though, like, and, and I, I've already fallen off completely. I told you guys, like, I was trying to, like, hey, play I'm gonna it, yeah. play, yeah, and yeah. I get once, um, <laughs> and I was done, but, um, they're just so into the creation of the characters. Like there's just so much opportunity for yeah. them to like build things within there. Like the community, it's like, it literally is ready. Player one is exactly like Fortnite's um, platform. That's what the, you know, it, the potential of it could be like uh, the metaverse and where they just expand it and keep going with all these characters that they create. And plus the exclusivity of the different seasons that they have for mm. each, you know, skin that they can earn or whatever. And it's like, it becomes its own uh, economy uh, in that sense. Okay. They can so, trade them or they can buy upgrades and all that. Kind okay. Of stuff. So I'm glad you use that. Mm. Cause I, that's how I was trying to, I was trying to wrap my brain around this. Cause this is so foreign to me. I don't, I don't play any of these games and I'm not aware of it. 
But Ready Player One was what exactly what I thought is when they when I was reading the article of like how they're describing this. It's gonna be all these worlds. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna plug in and play whatever games you want. And just like remember the 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 part when it first starts, the movie starts, it opens up with him and he's like looking to meet up with his buddy. He's like, where are you at? Yeah. Oh, he's probably over in whatever world. And it's like where he's doing all this crazy like doom type of like stuff. And then there's another world that's all race car stuff. It's like it sounds like it's going to be like that. It is, I it bet, is too, right? So this is the digital space, but now let's bring that into the physical parks where they have these warehouses where you put on the um, you know, the laser tag kind of gear and you're in VR and you're doing you're still playing the, the Fortnite like setup, but you're doing it physically. You know, like the, the, I saw that they had some of this uh some of these warehouses they're already doing that. Um, you know, where they're doing VR like physically with other people. So this is I, I'm banking on that, right? So Disney's my big bet, stock wise. I'm not a stock guy, nor should you listen to me for advice, but this is what I, I've put more I've bought more stock in Disney than anything else. And a part of that strategy was because they took a big hit this last couple of years, bad pub and everybody's hating yeah. on them. So that which has been good for stock price. But they're going really hard in this direction and then the and in, in theme the parks. Theme parks. Yeah. Yep. And I do believe that there's going to be a massive resurgence in in person type stuff. And maybe it looks like this where it's kind of a blended version mm -hmm. of you know, a, adopting some of the metaverse type of virtual world type shit, and then at the same time, well, the theme parks are really profitable for them, aren't they? Both, dude. Yeah, yeah I think I think both of these are. And R Disney really hasn't made a move in the you know the video game world. No. Like, like imagine a company that, that creative. This will be their first big thing. Yes, right? and yeah. and so that's a big pl that's a big play for them and a very profitable space. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that it does well, into. if it does really well, it'll only boost uh, interest in their theme parks and other things. Everything, yeah. right? So I, I mean, I'm. Which, by the way, do you know how expensive Disney is now? Like, my daughter was there. Like, it's, it's so crazy. The <laughs> tickets are so. It is so expensive to, oh. to Disneyland. Now. Yeah. So just speaking of expensive in the economy, like, so th I thought this was an interesting strategy and um, I thought Adam might appreciate this. This was a uh, Wendy strategy uh, going into, I think it's next year or um, they were actually going to start like testing out, you know, how um, with Uber, like there's different rates in terms of like volume when there's like high traffic times yeah. and not, and then the, the price points kind of fluctuates because of that. Yeah. So they're going to start testing that out uh, within uh, the food. Wendy's yeah, in, in, in food. So the, wait, how would they wait, wait, so they're going to run discounts like at low traffic areas, yes. low, low traffic, low times. traffic times. Interesting. And then they, they, they keep the price the same or higher at like a uh, high traffic. Interesting. Times. That's actually smart, right? That's it, really smart. That's really what an interesting strategy. That's actually a very smart strategy. But it increased the price a little bit during the high traffic times where it's five to seven when everybody goes yep. to get dinner. Yeah. No, it's a ghost town. You're catering it's to two, to two to three. Yeah. And you're catering to customers who want low price. Yeah. They absolutely need to. Like, hey, saving 50 cents on the meal is a big deal to us. So we'll. we'll so it'll shift. help the employees because when you get that much volume, I remember that like, too. Yeah. Like even like in and out and all that. It's just ridiculous. Then you become like, more times. efficient, right? Yeah. You become more efficient. Interesting. Wow. That is yeah, that's smart. That's very interesting strategy and what is smart. it going to play uh yeah i don't know when when I, it was either next year or like in in a in a quarter or two yeah so i wonder if anybody's following suit now you know what's interesting about that i heard i don't think when is it 2025 yeah as early as 2025 okay, okay. And did it say is there like it's probably you know, gonna how roll the prices are gonna be does it say it's just they just call it dynamic pricing <laughs> and uh day part offering so it's gonna it's gonna adjust over time anything, does, anything else you're familiar with that does that that has dynamic pricing no, like that. It was just Uber. Uber, yeah. They, they mentioned. I mean, technically, I, all products meet you know you know demand and supply, so it's all dynamic. But not where a company is applying it in such a you know like throughout the day type of. You well, know what's interesting? Um, I, yeah. I don't. So here's the thing. Golf, I don't think maybe. Uh, I don't think it's going to oh, slow you know what down. Does that? Movie theater tickets. Oh yeah, uh, that's another. Movie, that's yeah. an example. But movie of, theater of, tickets make sense because the space in the movie in, in the movie theater is. It makes the same sense that the Wendy's things does. No, the food doesn't run out. It just has to, you're just waiting more, but the food, you still have to pay your employees the same. I think what it's oh, going to do. Think, I, oh, you think that the, well, I guess the movie seats would could, that's what could I mean. potentially sell. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is I don't think that Wendy's is going to lose sales during high traffic I don't times. Think so. I, don't I think it's just going to make their low traffic times. I think so. Yeah, I think that's the play. More, <laughs> more yeah, I think that's the play. I yeah. think that's exactly what the, well, it's kind of, I guess it's not that crazy different than when McDonald's rolled the, the, the Wednesday and Sunday cheeseburgers. Yeah, they yeah, use, yeah. they look their lowest traffic days. Yeah. 
and they ran a sale. They ran those or happy hour at bars. They do that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they ran. Right, they exactly. ran the twenty nine cent cheeseburger okay, hamburger. So it's not as revolutionary. As we <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just I've never heard anybody like deliberately. Yeah, it's a di- it's a different it's different though because yeah. you can like th- at least then I was or, I mean you had to have the cheeseburgers or hamburgers right if you were going it was a specific the, food. Yeah, it was specific. Where this will have you probably the flexibility of whatever. It's Wonder if people take advantage of it and then make them re- you know reverse. <laughs> of course. You know. I mean, how do you take advantage of it, though? I you mean, go and buy 15, you know, burgers. Uh, and then what, hold on to it for four hours and then sell it? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you would but, do, huh? You'd be at the door. My burger's cold. <laughs> you'd be at the door. Fine, I, I figure the margin. Hey, you out. want a Wendy's burger? <laughs> you can save 25 cents by buying <laughs> That's an Adam's got a trench coat of burger. <laughs> take take <laughs> literally burger flipping to a whole other level, right? <laughs> yeah, dude. Nice. Hey, I, like you, I know you know. Earlier we were talking about food allergies and autoimmune issues, and um, you know I should have gone right into our partner Seed because probiotics <coughs> or beneficial bacteria have been shown to be helpful in both cases, um, but more generally with inflammation. Probiotic use. Is immunomodulate it, 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 it modulates your immune system, meaning it helps balance out your immune system. And autoimmune issues means you have an immune system that's not a, that's not balanced. And it also has anti-inflammatory properties. So probiotics are it, it's it's turning out that what the data is showing, at least with a good probiotic, right? Like a good company that's got you know good delivery and all that stuff. It's turning out that probiotics will probably be a supplement that is more necessary than not. Yeah, that people should probably. Take I know. I just I saying, we're all th- finding that out. I yeah. feel like it's it's getting more, way more common like that. As a matter of fact, when I remember when you really wanted to work with C, and I thought, really, do you think there's that many people that are going to be? Yep. And I was actually blown away. I mean, still, it's been a they've been a long time sponsor of the show, and it yep. does really well. So, yep. have you actually got the children's one yet from them? No. From C? No. Oh, we have that. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, we have it. We've had it for. Oh, a, I need a, it. Yeah, yeah. For a while. I'm surprised you didn't. I no. thought for sure you'd be all over that right I didn't away. I know that we had that. Yeah, yeah. They have a. They you have give a, it to Max. They have a children. Yeah, they have a children's product. So they have a. Look it up, Doug, on the thing. Pull it up for him, so you can see. I, mean, I don't know what the. Maybe you can tell me what the the difference is. It's lower probably. lower dose. You, you think it's the same thing? Just it's a lower, the same strains. Same thing. Just I guarantee a, it. Just a lower dose. Yeah, it'll be a much lower. You wouldn't think they add anything else in there for children? I would think they would. No, add. unless I mean, I'm sure it's a chewable. Is it a chewable or is it powder. like a powder? Yeah, it's Katrina gives. It's it not going to be a pill. Yeah, um, no, it's not. It's not a pill. It's it's a. I think it's. A but powder. it would be the same bacteria. It's like little powder sticks. Yeah, it's powdered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's the same strains. I'm assuming it's just a lower uh, concentration. Yeah, you're not going to give your kid the you know the, the same strength. Cool uh, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Done. Oh yeah. Right. And you can put it in yogurt and stuff. Like, yeah, I'm going to get. I think, what, I think Katrina mixes it into his yogurt. I think is what we do. Wow. Mm-hmm. Hey, a uh, little little left turn here. I read something pretty funny about um, a prank that a U.S. athlete played on the Russian athletes in during the the era of like the Soviets versus Americans or whatever. Oh yeah. Okay, so. Nine-time Olympic champion Mark Spitz. So he was uh, one of the fastest swimmers of all time. Okay, American. He told the Russian swim team coach in 1972 that the reason why he was so fast is because he had a mustache. So the very <laughs> the very next year, every Russian swimmer had a mustache. No, no way. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. It's is a true <laughs> story? <Yeah. laughs> that, that's ridiculous. Isn't that great? That yeah. is great. Like, hey, guys, this is why I'm so fast. You know? It's a secret. I love it. Hey, you know what else is funny? You know what I like about one of my favorite things about um, X, right? Formerly known as, as Twitter, are their community notes because their community notes are hilarious. So this guy, there's this page on there called Eclipse Trades. So it's this dude that's like, this is how you make money. This is what, whatever, right? Yeah. Okay. So he posts this picture of this this like gorgeous house with a Lamborghini in front of it. Yeah. And the post says, three years ago, I got kicked out of high school. Today, at 19 years old. I just closed on my two point three million dollars. Oh, I Miami saw home. that the guy guy. And he goes, guy, take guy. risks in life, and then they did. Somebody outed him. It, <laughs> underneath it was community notes. Yeah, and it said this house was not purchased by so and so. It currently is for rent. Bro, he's is- engaging in a form of advertising fraud to present himself as more successful than he actually. <laughs> so is. you know, he, that's so, what it says, dude. <laughs> dude, this is so. So I was talking to our friend that's Chris Nagibi. I love it. I was yeah. talking to our friend Chris Nagibi about this, and it's like it's so he he actually. He did a, he, he posted like a statistic on like actually how many billionaires there are like in the United States and then how many millionaires there actually are by by percentage and then also what ages they range yeah. in and it's like it's it's not even mathematically possible 
but there's this many 30 year old multimillionaires. But yet on Instagram, you would think oh, there's dude. fucking tens of thousands of them. <laughs> yeah. Such smoking mirrors. Because they all they all do this hustle, which yeah. they they Or rent, they all rent a car. They rent these cars, or... they rent these big houses. They See, and there's they, that place down in LA where you can literally in uh at the airport, you can just walk up in a private jet, take your pictures, do all that. They rent it out just yeah. so you just take pictures like you're yeah. in it. for social media. That's it. I, it. Here's the thing too. Like an obvious oh, red something flag. Something about that makes me so mad here's an it's obvious red flag so if you're making millions especially if you claim to make tens of millions of dollars doing whatever craft you're you would never waste your time selling hundred five hundred dollar thousand dollar courses yeah. yeah it would be a waste yeah, of your time yeah. mathematically right it'd be a waste of your time to get on zoom calls and talk to a bunch of young people to talk to 20 people who spent 500 bucks that's right oh. it would not be worth your time uh -uh. to do that so right away that should be your red flag that this person who has all these lamborghinis and homes that are worth tens of millions of dollars yeah. is spending time for their 500 hundred dollar course they're yep. selling you yeah. like that should make you go hmm that doesn't make why sense why isn't he just talking to ceos and yeah <laughs> staying in that or lane. just keep or do more what you're doing because if you're already yeah, right. if you're making 10 million 10 million dollars a year you have to do the, yeah, do the hourly do math. the hourly math on that you're worth thousands and thousands of dollars by the hour and so anything that is less than that is not worth your time you should just do more of your craft either right? you're it's lying just, it's basic or you're math. the worst businessman yeah, of all time. Right, exactly. that's all these guys these guys online that's what they do is they make all these radical claims that they own you know who's the other one who's this what's this guy's name I, uh oh chris cron i found just found him he's funny to watch because it's almost like a parody and he's talking about how millions of dollars he's worth. He's got hundreds of company zones. I'll say, buy my coaching course for five hundred dollars. How to do this? It's like, bro, you're worth all that money. What the fuck are you doing that for? You have no no reason to do that. Go go flip another ten houses or flip another five companies, and you'll you want to coach one person. It makes yeah. no. It sense. It reminds me of like old uh, like old martial arts books before MMA. MMA cleaned out a lot of this crap, but old martial arts like masters discover the fighting secrets that nobody wants you to know, <laughs> yeah. and it's like so and so. Sifu, who you know yeah. kills fifteen, you know whatever. Yeah, it's the five finger death palm. Yeah, you know? it's like and I remember I used to when I was a kid. I used to buy these things. I'm like, oh my god, this is like ancient fighting techniques. Nobody wants to know. And then and then <laughs> UFC came out. And I was like, oh crap, they all. I mean, it's, all it's, it, it's the oldest hustle of time, yeah, yeah. and I it, I don't know. I don't ever see it going away because there is. No. There's a much larger portion of people that that don't want to do the work. Mm -hmm. People want to get rich, but they want to do it fast and, they, and, they're, and, and they're easy. They're and they willing they want to believe it. They're, they're willing to take out a loan to pay for the shortcuts. Because somehow there's a secret. Yeah, because they think that there's going to be some sort of hack or shortcut to get there, and and they're convinced yeah. by this person that they have that. And again, the for, like if you're listening, the formula is to literally just go. This person claims to be making all this money, whatever the number is that they claim to be making, all you have to do is divide the math and how many hours their working hours are in a day and what that would mean based on what they say their time is worth and then scratch your head when they tell you that they have a course. No, they. you know why, Adam? They're doing it because they want to share. Yeah, that's what they, they pitch people. people but yeah, that's no. not the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, they're giving back That's now. not the same. Yeah. Those people don't do that. If they do that, they just do a nonprofit and they give it for free. Uh, they really cared about you and they were making that much yes. money. Then they're then yes. I would just host big free things. It's right, like uh, if I'm that wealthy, services. if I'm making tens of millions of dollars and I care about giving back to the community, then I would dedicate time to give back to the community for nothing because Fake. that money that money is so minimal to what I make that it would it nah, was, it doesn't make sense. That's a yeah. great way to figure it out. Yes, right. seriously. Go shout out. Chris Cron. Go check him out. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, don't do oh, that. Okay. Don't do that. I was hating dude. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Stop me. following yeah, me. Yeah, no, I'm being a yeah. dick. I'm right. being a dick. Who did I already you? shout out the baller busters on here? Yeah, I believe oh, Did I shout oh, them out, Andrew, yeah, officially? Yeah, or did I I don't think I did a, I've talked to you guys about it. I don't think I've officially shouted them out. Mm, let me double check. Look up if I if I haven't shouted them out, take a look at Baller but it's perfect for this this conversation we're having right now. Like this is what they yeah, built. Yeah, two Two, three, eight. We G give them some more love then. Okay. Give, them, give them some more love. They okay. need more love. I mean, I just love pages like this that are dedicated to like calling out all these scammers and stuff. So it's like, it's a so baller busters. Yeah. Baller busters on Instagram. Go check them out. If you're looking to get your hormone levels tested, thinking about possible hormone therapy or testosterone replacement therapy, or you're interested in peptide science and what they could do for you, your health, your athletic performance, your appearance, your sleep, your sex drive, and more, 
Go to mphormones.com. The doctors there will assess you and give you the right recommendations and prescriptions to help optimize your life. Again, it's mphormones.com. All right, back to the show. Our first question is from Mindful. What are some tips to keep joints functionally healthy and pain-free when you're 40 plus? You know, there's this, there's this myth around joint pain that as you get older, your joints deteriorate, okay? And that's what causes joint pain. The truth is, if you move your, jo your joints uh, in, in optimal ways, if you move them the way that they're supposed to appropriately, and you strengthen the body, strengthen the muscles that support the joints, joints actually stay healthier yeah. over longer periods of time. Like somebody who works out and does it right um, and doesn't beat themselves up or, or have muscle imbalances or train, whatever, they train appropriately and they're in their 70s, they will have better, healthier joints than people who don't do that who are in their 70s. It's balance. I mean, it's yes. if you get too strong in one direction, a lot of times this, you know, the... Uh, you, and you don't put the work in in terms of stabilizing that and being able to control that. Um, this is where you see like that discrepancy itself this is where you start to see uh, a lot of the joint pain uh, start to arise because, and this is what people don't consider because they, they think that they're getting strong and they are getting a lot stronger, but uh, they're not building up their support system alongside it. Ben Gay and Icy Hot. You're welcome. Yeah, oh. <laughs> you mix them together. No. Oh my god! Hey, does that just, seem just like don't? Hey, you gotta that, wash your hands. Hey, that was that was the uh, that was like the formula. Of, you know, twenty. That's what my dad did twenty five years. years ago. You yeah. say? I mean, don't you remember when you first were a trainer just twenty years ago? Like mm. the locker room, bro. Mix those. You walk in the locker room. Oh yeah, it smells. Uh, after playing basketball with all the older guys at nine Minty, o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it just bro. Like bro mix those with, Mix those with Tiger Bomb. You make yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you won't feel nothing. It's crazy that there's still a massive market for that. I mean, that's yeah. kind of the what people think is well. Look here. Look, if you move, here's the keys. Here are the keys. Uh, strength train properly and appropriately with full ranges of motion. Train in different planes of motion um, and work on or maintain mobility. So that means you're not just strength training, but mobility movements. If you do those things and you do it appropriately, you're going to have amazing joints. I, I'm going to skip to the last one as the my most priority. I think people that get into 40 plus, they've just ne they've neglected to move in all these different yeah. planes. Yep. And yeah. a, a mobility practice solves basically all of that. will solve that. Yeah. So uh, a great program, our MAPS performance program, uh, every other, the, uh, the off days are the uh, mobility days. And instead of approaching the workouts as the priority, the foundational days, approach the mobility days as as your like primary. Like that's mm -hmm. the thing you focus on. I mean, this was for me, at, and I was 38. When, when yeah. was that? It was around 38 or yeah. so. Um, I went on that like year long, year and a half, two year kick of just, that was the way I trained. Everything was focused around mobility. And it's not like I lost a bunch of muscle from that. Like you... You're going to end and you end up feeling so much better, but you just got to prioritize it. it be, instead of prioritizing the squat, bench, deadlift stuff that we always talk about are so important. It's like put your energy and focus in mobility training first. And then that becomes the secondary thing of making sure you do this. And I'm not saying, but I mean, but disregard those movements. Right. Cause it's important to understand that appropriate and proper strength training makes your joints healthier and less, you'll have less pain. You'll have less problems. You'll be less yeah. likely to develop. Um, cartilage issues. The problem though, Sal, with issues. that statement is that- I say appropriately pro Exactly. Yes. Because that's such a wide range and most people think what they're doing is appropriate and uh, uh, appropriate no. and proper. Appropriate meaning you're using, you're using a weight that you can manage with good technique and good form. You're working out or trying to work out in full ranges of motion yeah. and you're training in different planes of motion. So what are different planes? Different planes are like- Front to back, side to side, and rotate. So think of it that way, right? So if all your exercises are front to back, like I'm squatting, I'm benching, I'm deadlifting. Well, I'm not st strengthening things laterally, side to side. I'm not rotating with anything. So eventually I'll start to develop uh, problems because like Justin said, you, get, you start to get this imbalance between the strength you can do in one direction and the strength you can move in the other direction. And that causes problems. And that's the thing too. And I love mobility. You know, obviously this has been like a big... Um, contribution that I brought in initially when we started the podcast, but it's like, 
you don't need to always like be stuck doing mobility in conjunction with like you need to weave in these movements into your training. And so if you actually did lateral lunges, if you actually yeah. did rotational uh, movements that are loaded, you worked your way up to that where it's a strength move, um, you know, it's going to cover the bases. It's just about expressing uh, all the potential that your joints have in terms of movement and, so, and being able to strengthen it. So the reason why I love the idea of going all in on the mobility thing and making the strength training and, and traditional stuff as an afterthought into this is because once you do that and you and you start to see the benefits and you feel the benefits of doing that, you, you then adopt that philosophy. And then when you put enough time in, I actually rarely ever have to do mobility anymore. Now exactly. I just incorporate exactly. the exercise. So you're if talking you, about somebody who's already experiencing. Yeah, yeah, that's his yeah, person. Most people have it. That's his person. They're 40 some years these, old. They're yeah. oh man, my my hips, my knees, yeah. my all these shoulders. I just like I I get a little bit of rhythm and well, I, that's different. If you already so have like, pain, then yeah, you yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking on. about. I'm not, I'm not talking to the 35 year old who's who's like just oh, I'm trying to be proactive because let's be honest, that person's not asking this question. Yeah. It's the person who feels like every time they get in a little bit of a rhythm, the knees start. Talking to them, the hips start talking to them, the shoulders start talking to them, and they just keep getting in this cycle of, and they either one, they either uh, do uh, crutches by putting wraps and straps yeah, and yeah, belts and, and, yeah, and wrap yeah. it up or shortening range up. And it's like, you know what you need to do is you need to just let go of that training for a little bit, completely adopt this philosophy of becoming the mobility guy and get into flow and that type of stuff yeah. and see how good you feel from that and how little muscle you lose from going to become that, that guy or girl. And then after you've put enough work in and you see the difference, then you integrate exercises that that address all that. You start to do things like the windmill now or the Turkish get up. Yeah, you're building you, base of strength for your end ranges. Yes. That you didn't have. I don't have to. You it's don't have crazy that strength yet. the amount of uh, I had to do to yeah. get where I'm at now and how little I do of it now. Yeah. And now I have a deep full range of motion squat that I can sit ass to grass. I can sit down ass to grass comfortably with weight on my back for as long as I want. I don't I don't ever get uncomfortable in there. To where and, and you're talking about a guy who couldn't break 90 at one point in his lifting career. But and and now all I have to do is squat once a week ass to grass like that and it takes care of all that ankle and hip mobility issues that I used to have and low back issues and it completely addresses that. Yeah, getting there is hard. Yeah. Maintaining as much same thing goes for like overhead press. There was a time when I was the meathead guy whose shoulder pressed 90 degrees, everything was in front of him and I couldn't bring my arms up straight above it. And then I got to the point where Z pressing changed my life. And now, now as long as I Z press and do, or do complete standing overhead presses, I don't have to do all these crazy right. shoulder mobility moves because it keeps my shoulders hypermobile. So if once you've, once you have lost a lot of this mobility and you're suffering from this, this joint, this joint pains, one of the best things in my opinion is to kind of adopt this mobility philosophy in a good way to do that would be to prioritize like the mobility days in our right. in our uh, performance program and maybe only do one or two but, foundational days. But to days. prevent, to prevent, right? If, if they're saying I want to keep my joints functionally healthy, like move in different <clears throat> planes and you'll, and you'll probably never get yeah. to that point. Next question is from Cotogram. Do I need to drop my protein goals when I'm cutting? I'm 5'1", so my calorie budget is pretty small. When you're cutting, it is even more important to hit high protein yeah. targets. So yeah, high protein is, a, easier too. is important for any uh, goal, muscle building um, or burning body fat, but it's even more important for burning body fat because it's crucial for uh, preventing muscle loss. And also it produces satiety. So it helps your appetite, which is always a challenge when people are trying to cut. So if you have a small calorie budget, there's two things I would say. Number one, reverse diet. So you don't have such a small calorie budget. Even though you're five one, if your cut is twelve hundred calories, you're you're you, you probably need to reverse diet a little bit and get yourself so that you can burn more calories, so you can cut from a higher place. Number two, uh, if that's not you and you're still like, okay, well, you know, what do I do with my macros? As long as you eat essential fat, I mean, you you, you you're good. So obviously, if you're not getting essential fats and your proteins are too high, and now you can't get enough fats because otherwise you'll be over calorie, that's an issue. And again, in which case, I would say reverse diet. You shouldn't be in a place where you hit, you know, one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and then you have no room left for essential fats in your diet or any carbs in your diet. So I don't, I don't think I've ever had a client where I asked them to reduce protein, uh, to, to, to cut calories ever, yeah. ever, 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 ever. The only time I've ever told a client to reduce protein is digestive issues. 
because sometimes clients have a hard time with high protein diets, uh, and and the, and the, it's something to do with their digestion, and then mm -hmm. so we lower our protein intake. Other than that. Um, I many times increase protein intake in a calorie deficit to the point that you are making. And what's the most important piece of this question that we don't have is where is this person's calories? Because you're telling us your calorie budget is small. How small is it? If it's under 1500 calories, then you have to do what Sal's saying. You're, where you're at is not sustainable. It is not sustainable to cut down to 1,200 calories even to reach this temporary goal because it's eventually going to come back and it's going to come roaring back and can be hard to keep that off. So if you're under 1,500 calories uh, or that's where below that is where your cut is going to be, you're, you need you to, reverse you out. Gotta go the other way, focus yeah. on building muscle, building strength and adding calories to the diet. And honestly do that in such a small amount that you should probably lean out. If you just do a small increase in calories, focus on building muscle and getting stronger, you get you, leaner as a result. You'll get, you should get leaner yeah. as a result. Yeah. And, and uh, the other thing too is, you know, when you're in a calorie surplus, those extra calories are protein sparing, uh, meaning you don't need like high protein is not in, as important in a bulk. It's important, but it's not as important in a bulk. But when you're in a cut, do not eat low protein in a cut. You are you are asking your body to get rid of muscle if you do that. Next question is from Adrian. Can running strengthen the ankles if they're weak? <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's okay. Technically, yes, but here's why in the real world, no. <sighs> Because running is a skill, it's not uh, something that people practice and get good at. They just go out and run. And it's explosive. It, yeah, it's it's dynamic. It's explosive. If you have weak ankles and then you just go start to run, your, your running patterns are going to be based off of the weakness that you have. And so what's going to happen is you're going to end up strengthening the weakness. In other words, you're going to be strengthening muscle recruitment patterns that help suboptimal. They move around or they compensate for weak ankles. If you have weak ank weak ankles and you start running, here's what'll happen to you. Either A, you'll get ankle pain or most likely back pain and knee pain. This is very common where people start running and like, why do my knees hurt so much? Why do my knees hurt so much? And they try to get different shoes and cushion or more more cushion in their feet and whatever. But no, if you have weak ankles, you want to do controlled strengthening exercises to strengthen your ankles and then slowly progress yourself to the point where then you can run while maintaining good technique and form with the stronger ankles, but don't just jump into running. It's Not only idea. that, but you're, you're also strengthening the ankles in the same plane and most common injuries when it comes to weak ankles is like rolling the ankle yeah. and stuff like that. And so you're getting maybe a little, a little bit stronger ankles from running in the sagittal plane all the time, but that now that creates an even greater imbalance between that mm -hmm. and your ability to move laterally. And so you're more susceptible to rolling an ankle, doing something left or right or rotating. So, you know, doing some running, which is not even, and it's not even taking the ankle through full range of motion either. So now you're doing a repetitive movement you're strengthening it in a shortened, uh, a shortened range of motion in the same plane. You're explosively. not explosively. Yeah, explosively. You're not doing your ankles any favor by going out and running. Like if you're, if you've been told you have weak ankles, uh, then you should strengthen them in their fullest yeah. range of motion and and dynamically. But controlled. And yeah. If they're weak, you got to start. Start where strengthening it's the feet. Start strengthening. I mean, really gradually. Uh, I do like you know after you go through the process of stabilizing and. Um, you know, adding mobility and like ways to strengthen, um, you know, the potential on, from all different planes. Uh, I, I have seen some interesting uh, progression in terms of like, we were talking about those platforms that have a little bit of an angle to them uh, and just doing common squats or things with your ankles challenged on a little bit of a degree. So, you know, kind of gradually increasing the uh, the range with that, you know, that would make sense to me as a mm -hmm. trainer, but that's again, <laughs> you know, that's, that's a little bit further along, uh, you know, the process, but that would, the first step is to just really strengthen the feet and work on good walking patterns. Work Look, I, did on all a that. I did a video for this a long time ago. I don't know. Uh, maybe Andrew can find it. I don't remember what I, what it was. I think it was titled weak ankles. Maybe, uh, it was, you put a quarter, you go barefoot and you put a quarter under uh, the 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 soft pad where the big toe is at, and you're trying to drive. And what's really common when people uh, 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 elevate their heels is their their heels will kick out or mm -hmm. collapse because their ankles are unstable and weak. And so the exercise is being able to drive through the quarter, keep your ankles in a neutral position, and then the progression to that is to go into a body weight squat. 
from there. From there. Mm-hmm. And that's a great, uh, you know, uh, ankle it's just, strengthening if, exercise. If you have weak ankles, your risk of injury is much higher in your ankles. And so then you're going to go run. Like, terrible mm-hmm. idea. It is not going to strengthen your ankles. Uh, I know the whole, like, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger type of deal. But it's this is the one thing that will kill you. So Next question is from Iwalina Licka. What is the best way to fire your CNS prior to a workout? For example, would doing dumpy squats or iso holds using a suspension trainer be okay to do? All right. So the central nervous system is the command center that tells the muscles to fire. And the central nervous system is very, very responsible for the amount of force and strength you can generate. Just like your muscles are responsible, the size of your muscles and the capacity of your muscles, the central nervous system is also, if not more, responsible for force production and strength. It literally is what tells the muscles to contract and move together. And it's the reason why when you do a new exercise, you feel shaky. It's not the muscles, it's the central nervous system. So the question is, how do I get my central nervous system ready so that I can have the best workout? Well, um, isometrics is a great way to do that. Isometrics isometrics. is one of the best ways to get your CNS to really ramp up so that when you go do an exercise, you activate the most muscle fibers and you get the best results. Another way to do it is to do explosive exercises before you lift. Um, Box jumps before a squat or jumping push-ups before a bench press or explosive band rows before barbell rows or something like that. That'll also get uh, things to fire up. But yeah, you want to turn things on. And it's not to fatigue, by the way. So if you're doing these isometrics, it's not, like you're, it's not part of the workout. It's literally just turn things on. Then you get in the workout and, and you just get better results. So that was a long-winded answer to yes. 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 <laughs> Dumpy squat, Dumpy squat's actually great you yeah. know, for, for squatting. And, and just because of that fact alone that Sal's describing, it's just – you're able to get in position and really contract and tense up the muscles to respond. And and it's all about the recruitment process. So like really nothing, um, I mean, yes, you can go explosively, but uh, in terms of like safety and if we measure risk risk versus reward, um, you know, I'd probably lean a little bit more on the isometric side, but uh, yeah, for, for athletes, if you do like days where you're PRing or something, that's where they do that post-activation potentiation, potentiation, uh, and you can do that, and it does. Um, it gets it gets that real uh, fast twitch response, which gets your capacity increase of of the recruitment process. Yeah, I mean, I, the dumpy squats I think is incredible. I think suspension trainer is a good idea for some movements too. I could see doing a a, a hold in like a really deep chest press, yeah. right? So going to a really deep chest press hold, or getting in like the uh, W or I position with the suspension oh, trainer your shoulders, yeah, yeah and, and activating that and holding that in an isometric position to warm up your shoulders and. Get Get ready for a bench press or shoulder press stuff. Like, yeah, no, I could uh, suspension trainer and dumpy squats. I think you guys are, ever are see like a, do that. Uh, like a, how a fighter MMA fighters do this often as they're walking to the cage, they'll do a couple jumps. You ever notice that? Uh, yeah. yeah, right before they get they'll jump jumps with their knees. Too. They're, yeah. they're, and it's a natural. I don't even know if they're coached to do that. So what's but, what's uh, uh, Conor McGregor's thing? What's, what's I, this I doing? think that's just him being a yeah. he's being loose. Doing his thing. <laughs> yeah, he's the, I, I, like, I love it. Though. I think that's it, like a calming yeah. thing. Like re- being well, I don't know, but I know the jumping. I know the jumping is them. They're firing up their it. CNS. Like yeah. you do a couple jumps right before you do something, and it turns things on. And yeah. I think that's what they're naturally doing. Yeah. Look, if you're a hard gainer, we have a hard gainer guide. If it's hard for you to build muscle, if it's hard for you to pack on mass and strength. Get our free hard gainer guide. It's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano, and Adam is at mindpumpadam. 